Hi guys, and welcome back to The Rock. We're so glad that you came back this week to join us. So all month, we've been talking about the theme of being unstuck and the idea of determination. Determination means is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. So when you're determined, you don't give up. And that got me thinking. So all week I've been thinking about a game that we can play. And what came to my mind? All right, do you guys know about those little plastic bugs, right? The ones you use to either scare your sister or maybe your best friend? And then, how about some blue painter's tape? The extra sticky kind. Okay, so this week we're gonna do things just a little bit different. We're not gonna play the game in the rock this week. We're actually have a volunteer family, the Lydix, who are gonna play our game this week. So here in just a second, I'm gonna send it over to them. But let me just give you a couple of ground rules of what you're gonna be seeing. Okay, so they're gonna be split up into two teams. They're gonna be wrapped in the tape. And guess what? They're gonna get to roll around and see how many bugs they can get stuck to them. Just thinking about it's making me dizzy. All right, let's send it over to Scott right now. Hey everybody, thanks Chris. I am so excited to be here with you. Well, kind of with you, virtually with you. But Club 56, I miss you guys so much. I really do. I can't wait till we're all together again. And who knows when that'll be. But in the meantime, we're going to have so much fun. So like Chris was saying, we're going to play a game today. And I'm really excited about this game. And there's two parts to this game. I'm not going to tell them what the second part is quite yet. But we need three teams and three participants that are willing to be wrapped. Do I have three participants I'll, in the room? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, kidding us. All right, so we've got Mr. Oscar, Oscar Lydic. We've got Max Lydic and Miss Kittis Lydic. They are going to be our willing participants. You all heard them volunteer, right? They're going to be our willing participants to enter this phase one. And now we need some rappers. I'll do it. I'll do it. Well, I guess I'll do it too. So we got Mr. Bryce over to the right. Thank you, Nevaeh. We got Miss Emily. Hi. And then Mr. Scott. I'll be your final rapper, okay? So what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do our best rap job. But here's the trick. I want you to wrap the tape backwards. So the sticky side needs to be out. Oh. So we're going to have 60 <laughs> seconds. 60 seconds to make that wrap job happen. You can use as much or as little tape as you'd like. 60 seconds and the clock is about to start. Oh, wait, wait, one more thing. You cannot wrap the arms in place. They have to be able to move their arms. So from their head to their knees. Wait, including the hair? No. Oh, and you're not allowed to wrap your arms. It has to be on the body. Oh. So do you hold your arms up? Yeah, hold your arms up. And that's for a safety measure. We're safe here in Club 56. Wait, no. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on your mark, get Ready? set, go! Oh, shoot. Oh, no, go the other way. Uh, well, uh, yeah, stop! Oh, you have to do something. Yeah, Yes. Scoot back. Everyone scoot you. back. Keep going, keep going. Uh, <laughs> is a minute up yet? This is a long minute. Four seconds. Two seconds. Keep and going. done! Done! done. separation, so, so, social distancing, but at home, you guys get a vote who our best wrapped people are. We have Oscar, looking a little thin and trim, I like that. We have Miss Kittis, nice job, and then Max, nice and sticky. All right, now we go to phase two of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't notice, you have been stepping on bugs. Ew. Ew, there is bugs all over the floor, but... Here is your goal. With your newly sticky wrapped bodies, 
You are going to pick up as many buds as you can without your hands. You have to use the tank. And at the end of the process, the team with the most bugs, you win. So, on your mark, we have only 30 seconds for you to pick up the bugs. On your mark, uh, get ready, go! <laughs> <laughs> get the ball! No, 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 Done. Stand up carefully. Can I? Carefully stand up. Ow, my leg hair. <laughs> I don't got any. You don't got any? <laughs> All right, Miss Kittis. I count Oscar. one, Oscar two, three, four, oh, five, oh. six, seven, that eight, nine, okay. ten bugs. Ten and bugs by Miss Kittis. Eleven, 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 eleven bugs. Eleven. Max has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot of dog hair. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16. Scorpion on the butt. Get us moved. One, Number 16. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow, we have a dirty carpet. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, oh, 20. We have a winner. Woo! We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. From the Lydic House the bug man. to Club 56, we miss you, we love you. Back to you, Chris. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Scott, and thanks, Lydic family. That was a lot of fun. Now, I don't know about you, but just watching them made me dizzy. But guess what? I am so glad they had the determination to finish out that game. All right, I know you guys are excited about the story, and it's going to start in just a minute. But first, let's all stand up and praise God together. It's me, Haley, and thanks for sticking with me all month. <laughs> Today, since that's our very last day of sticky scenarios, 
I figured what better way to wrap things up than with a little dessert. Ah, dessert? Wherefore art thou dessert? It's right here. Oh, it's all, everything's good. So I have chosen to go with an all American favorite. Drum roll, please. Uh, th th not that kind of drum roll. Uh, th that's okay, that's okay. Rice Krispie treats, whoop, 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 whoop. Rice Krispies, marshmallows, I already got started on making it because I was just that excited. Ooh, gooey marshmallow goodness. I've already measured out and melted the butter and marshmallows. Shh. Mm. And now just to add the Rice Krispies. Here we go. Ooh, it's like cereal confetti. The best kind of confetti because you can eat it. This month we've been learning a lot about determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, we are learning about a man from Ethiopia who was determined to understand God's promises written in the Bible. And luckily, God sent someone to help him understand. Oh, but don't let me give away any spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> See you guys in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter eight, verses 26, through 40. Philip, like his friend Stephen, was a Jesus follower. Both men had been chosen to help new believers who needed food or special care. At your service. But after Stephen was killed, the Jewish religious leaders became even more bold in hunting down people who followed Jesus. They were led by a young man named Saul. Go house to house, find these Jesus people and toss them in jail. Many of the new believers left Jerusalem and scattered, but everywhere they went, they shared the story of Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He came to rescue all of us. Philip traveled to a town in Samaria where he told everyone about Jesus and even made sick people well through God's power. I can walk, look, I can dance, <laughs> praise God. Philip and the new believers in the city were filled with joy, but then an angel of the Lord appeared to Philip. Go south to the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. Wait, what? Everything's going so well here. What good can I do in the desert? Still, Philip set out immediately. He was about to discover that he wasn't the only one with questions. Far to the south, on that very desert road, a man from Ethiopia was speeding along in his chariot, reading from a scroll. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Who's he? He who? The man was a high official in charge of everything owned by the Ethiopian queen. He believed in God and had chosen to become a Jew, even traveling for days to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. But still, he was filled with questions as he read from scripture. This prophet, Isaiah, I don't understand what he's saying. As Philip hiked along the road, he spotted the Ethiopian official's chariot ahead. God's spirit spoke to Philip. Go to that chariot. Stay near it. On my mark, get set. Philip ran until he came alongside the chariot, where the official was still absorbed in the words of Isaiah. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. <laughs> Do you understand what you're reading? The official's eyebrows shut up, and he nearly dropped the scroll. Stop the chariot! As the chariot slowed, the official peered down at Philip. How can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. I'm someone. Then come sit up here with me. Thank you. Show me where you're reading. Right here. He was led like a sheep to be killed, just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off. He did not open his mouth. 
When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. The official frowned in concentration. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? He's talking about the one God has sent to rescue all of us. His name is Jesus. As the two men traveled along that hot, dusty road, Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how Jesus gave his life for each of us and, and was raised to life again. This, this, this is amazing. This changes everything. Ahead, the men could see a few lone palm trees. As they approached, sunlight flared off a clear pool of water. Look, water, what can stop me from being baptized? <laughs> Let's do it. Stop the chariot. Philip and the official climbed down from the chariot, and Philip led the man down into the water. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, praise God. Dripping wet and filled with joy, the two men came up out of the water. Philip, you would love Ethiopia. You really should. Philip? Philip? Philip had suddenly, completely disappeared. In fact, God's spirit had whisked him away. He's gone. Only God could have done that. Let's get a move on. I've got more reading to do. <laughs> the Ethiopian official went on his way, a changed man. And Philip found himself in the town of Azotus. Um, what just happened? Well, I'm sure there are more people around here who need to hear about Jesus. Both Philip and the Ethiopian official had continued to be faithful and seek God, even when they couldn't see the whole picture. And the story of Jesus continued to spread. I love Rice Krispie Squares, full of marshmallow and zero cat hair. Oops, except for that one. <sighs> Mr. Fluffins! I told him not to get on the counter. I think that's it. Yep. Oh, hi. Hello again. Uh, I was just finishing up the dessert. See? <laughs> Looks good, right? Almost as good as our story we just heard. I mean, wow. God is so awesome. Let's take a look at our timeline, shall we? Yay! In the Old Testament, God spoke to certain men called prophets to tell people what was to come. Isaiah was one of those prophets. He spoke about the coming of Jesus and what this promised savior would be like. When Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled every promise made by God. So when the Ethiopian man was reading the words of Isaiah, he was reading about Jesus, but he couldn't understand what Isaiah was talking about. It's a good thing God sent Philip to help him put all the pieces together. And it's a good thing the Ethiopian man wasn't afraid to ask questions. When he didn't understand what he was reading, he didn't let that stop him from reading or asking questions. He asked Philip to help him understand. That's important for us to do too. Questions, good questions. Questions going for one. Oh, we go in the back, question number two. And oh, we got a third question right here. Don't be afraid to ask questions about God. If you don't understand something, just ask someone. Sometimes the answer won't be there right away, but still ask. Don't let what you don't understand keep you from having a relationship with God. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when you have questions. Well, it's been an awesome month with you guys. It's time for a little dessert celebration. Let's try it out. Hmm. Oh!
What a great story. And here's what we need to remember, guys. Just like the royal official, we might have questions sometimes. And there's sometimes where we don't understand things. And that's okay. The important thing is that we continue to trust in God and that we ask questions that we can consistently make the wise choice. All right, guys. So remember, on Tuesday and Thursday, we do our community spotlight post. And on Wednesday, please come join us for a fun activity and always a Bible lesson along with that. And don't forget, down in the comments as usual, if you would like to give, you can. Just follow the link. As always, guys, we truly miss you, and we cannot wait to see you again. So, if you guys would just take a second, I would like to say a prayer to close us out. Dear God, thank you so much for all that you're doing for us. God, just help us to consistently just trust in you and that you have a plan for us. And help us to ask questions when we don't understand things and that we can always make the wise choice. We love you, God, and we can't wait for the great things that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys. Oh gosh. Oh.